What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to show how you can create dappled lighting inside of Blender using a very basic yet incredibly powerful technique. Breaking up light with this technique can both help your 3D renders have a little bit more organic look to them and can also help integrate your CG elements into a live action shot that has the same lighting effect. Anyways guys, to demonstrate this technique, I thought I'd just share this project I've been working on recently. This sort of apocalyptic project is sort of a work in progress, but I thought it was a nice example of how I used this dappled lighting technique to blend CG into live action. And this is the composite I have here so far. We have our live action shot here, and then I've added some zombies in the deep background with our horde add-on, and then I've added a CG vehicle closer to our camera here as well. And I just want to share this as an example of this technique, because you can see the dappled light throughout our CG elements here, specifically on the car in the foreground, that the light is really being broken up nicely on the hood of our vehicle. And then throughout our zombies here in the back, you can see we have little hot spots that I've created with this technique. And that was so we could match, of course, the lighting throughout our live action shot. So for example here, if I go into our compositing tab, you can see that if we go to our original shot that we've added our CG elements to that along the road here we have this dappled light effect as the sun is shining through the trees here and then hitting the street where our CG elements are. And as you guys know I keep saying it on this channel it's very important to match the lighting on your CG elements to the lighting in your live action shot. So I'm going to share with you how we created this dappled light effect on our car as well as the zombies here in the background. So I'll go ahead and go out into layout mode and all I've used to create this effect is a very simple area light and then I've opened up some of the node settings and added a few textures to it to break up the light in a more organic way. So you can see that our area light is just kind of side lighting our zombies as well as our car here right by the camera. And if we go into render view, we'll get a better idea of what's going on here. You'll see our light is creating that nice shape on our car here in the foreground as well as our zombies here in the background. So how do we do this effect? Well, it's actually a really simple technique. I'll go ahead and delete our area light for now so we can start from scratch. So go ahead and close this. So I'll press shift A, we'll add an area light to our scene. I'll scale it up a little bit like so. And for the sake of designing the texture on our light, I'm going to press shift A and I'll add another plane to our scene and just bring it right below our area light. So now you can see if we go into rendered view and we select our area light, we'll bring up the power to say something pretty heavy like 2000. And you can see we're just lighting up our plane here. I'll select our plane and just so we can see our dappled light a bit better once we have it, I'll add a new material and we'll just make it a little bit darker. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and select our area light that we're going to use to create this dappled light effect. The first thing we're going to do is dial back our beam spread. If you guys are familiar with cinematography, this is kind of like using a grid on a softbox. By having this number at 180, the light is going to spread 180 degrees from the source. So this light is going to be unrestrained and go all the way over 180 degrees this way and wrap around like so. And sometimes this is a nice effect if we want a very ambient source. However, for this effect, we want to have a really sharp shadow with our noise so I'll bring down our spread all the way to one degree and now you can see what that is doing here it's creating a very sharp shadow right where our area light is and then once we break up our light we can then feather this to create a softer edge on our light source so now what we're going to do is create a pattern to break up our light in a more organic way so I'll go ahead and click on use nodes. And now what we want to do is we want to go to the shading tab. So I'll go ahead, I'll get out of render view here for a second and we'll go into our shading tab. And I'll go back into render view now. And right now we have two different nodes and we're going to add a noise texture to either the color or the strength of our emission node here. So I'll go ahead and press shift A and go to texture. And you can actually use a variety of different textures here to control how you break up your light source. If you wanted to use a checkered texture, you can actually add this here, connect it to your color input. And you can see that we're actually creating a checkered pattern on our ground here. And we can actually change the scale, maybe make this one to make it a little bit bigger. And you can see the checkered pattern that we're adding to our light source. And we can also change you know, the color 
of our light source as well. So we can make one black so that there's no light on some of our checkered spots here, and then we can make the other one white. So by using a variety of these different texture inputs, you can control how you break up your light source. For this specific example, I want a pattern that's a little bit more organic than this. We could probably use a Musgrave or a Voronoi texture as well, but in this specific case, I wanna actually use a noise texture just because that's what I used in the example render that I showed you. So I'll go ahead and add this here and we'll delete our checkered texture. And we'll now connect our noise texture color or factor into our strength input of our emission node here. And right off the bat here, you can see we have some very fine noise on our light source. And if we actually go here to our object data properties for our light, we can actually get a nice preview here of what this noise is doing on our specific light source. So if we zoom in here, we can actually see a slight noise pattern on our light source. However, we wanna actually increase the contrast between there being no light and there being a lot of light. So in order to do that, we could add an RGB curves and increase the contrast, but a little bit nicer way to do this is by actually using a color ramp. So I'll go ahead and just search for it here, color ramp. And right before our noise texture meets our emission input here, I'll just kind of bring up our black levels. And you can actually see now on our preview window what's going on here, we're actually increasing the contrast of that noise on our light source. So now you can see this is going to give us a nice organic look on our light source. And we can also increase the power of our light just so we can see it a bit better. I might make this maybe 4,000, so it's a little bit brighter. And now what we can do here is we can actually change some of the settings in our noise texture in order to get a more desirable result. And after I adjust this noise texture, I'm actually going to combine it with another noise texture in order to create more refined detail. So with this first noise texture, I'm going to create the larger scale noise. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to bring our scale of the noise down. So now you can see that we have sort of larger splotches of light here, which is exactly what we want for some of the bigger branches that the sun is traveling through. So this is a nice initial result. And now what we can do is we can actually mix this noise texture with another one in order to add more detail. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and select these two nodes here. I'll press Shift D and duplicate them. And then I'll press Shift A and I'll look for a mix RGB node here. And we'll add this right before our emission node. And I'll actually connect our color of our second noise texture to the bottom input of our mix node. And now I wanna bring the factor all the way to one here so we can adjust our bottom noise texture. And I want this bottom noise texture to be a more refined noise. So in order to do that, I'll just maybe bring up the scale to something like eight. And now you can see we have smaller scale detail on our light source. So we can play around with some more of these settings if you like. We can, you know, add some distortion to it, maybe distortion of one, kind of break it up a little bit in a more organic way. But I think this is going to look pretty good once we combine our two noise textures together. And instead of using a mix node here, I actually want to switch this to subtract. And then we'll clamp our values here. And then what I want to do is actually flip the inputs here so that now what we can do is actually subtract the larger noise pattern from the smaller noise pattern. And then by adjusting some of our color ramp values here, we can sort of dial in the look that we want. I think this is looking pretty organic, but you can see what's happening here. We're adding small scale noise to our light source, a pattern that sort of acts like leaves breaking up the sun. And then we're taking larger scale noise, sort of like the branches and the bigger chunks of tree, and we're subtracting that pattern from the original leaf pattern. But you can play around with different noise textures in order to get your desired result. So this is how you can create a nice organic light source. And now that we've actually created it, we'll go ahead and delete our plane here. And let's actually add it to our scene and replicate that look we had originally. So I'll just kind of scale it up here on the x-axis and add it along our street here. Maybe give it a little bit of rotation so it's from that same direction as our live action shot. And scale it up a bit. And now if we go into render view, let's see what we get. And now you can see we have a little bit of speckle light here. I might just increase the power of our area light here since it's a pretty big source. But you can see that now we're getting a more organic look on both our zombies in the background as well as our bug here in the foreground. And if we just sort of rotate the area light around and find an area where the pattern is nicely being broken up onto our van here as well as our zombies in the background, it's a pretty nice way to use lighting to integrate our CG into the already patterned lighting within our live action shot. Then of course, with some compositing, we can blend all of our elements together in a more refined way. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel, and I'll see you next time.